All right, so this video will be how to uh, replace your timing belt on any Honda J series. Specifically today, we're working on a 2012 Honda Odyssey with the 3.5, but it's virtually the identical process for any Honda with any J series, whether it be the 3 liter, 3.2, or 3.5. Uh, you know, the Honda Odysseys, the Honda Accords, the Acura TLs, the Honda Pilots, anything with the J series motor. There are slight subtle differences, uh, but it, they're 95% they're all identical process. We're replacing a little bit more than what most videos do as well. Um, most videos just do the belt, water pump, uh, tensioner, pulleys, and bearings, and whatnot, uh, but they skip the oil seals. So we are also doing the crank seal and cam gear seals while we're in there too. Uh, those can and do leak over time, especially with high mileage, so it's a good idea to replace those seals while you're in there, but most people do not. So we'll be showing that as well. So one of the small differences you might run into, depending on which vehicle you're working on, your plastic cover might be in the way and you might want to pop it off. Uh, the other thing being that on some of them, your power steering pump, instead of being here and out of the way it looks like, for me getting this cover off on this Odyssey, uh, some of the vehicles, the water pump, or not water pump, excuse me, power steering pump, some of them are up here and in the way of removing the covers, so you may have to uh, unbolt the power steering pump and get it out of the way. So I'm going to start with removing the serpentine belt, and to do that, you have to get a wrench on this tensioner pulley here. You pull up on it, and you should be able to see that move and then you can pop it off with your other hand while you're relieving that tension. So then you'll need to remove this tensioner itself because it's in the way of the timing cover. Uh, so you got a bolt on the pulley under this pulley down here that you have to uh, back out and then down lower there's another bolt as well. And I'll show that here in a sec when I get it out. All right there's the part for me I had to pull it out through the bottom couldn't get it out the top because of this line in the motor mount. Uh, so there's your main bolt there You can't get this out while it's in there because there's not room and There is the other little bolt on the bottom All right, so at this point I can remove my upper timing belt covers um, Because as I said on this Odyssey my power uh, power steering pumps right here not in the way on Some of the other vehicles. It's right here. You have to take the bolt out get it out of the way so you probably have to pop the line off and plug them too so that you don't leak fluid everywhere but uh, on this odyssey at this point i can now go ahead and remove these upper covers i got the front cover off i just wanted to show this real quick this belt don't see any cracks and feels real nice and soft and rubbery but look at this you see how much that is moving that's a pretty loose timing belt there and when they get loose enough, that's how they start skipping teeth. And obviously the reasons that it would be loose like that would be either it stretched, most likely scenario, as they do, or you have a failed tensioner. All right, there's both your uh, upper cam covers there of the timing belt cover for reference. Make sure, now you can replace these if you want, these gaskets here, uh, but it's not really necessary. Uh, because there's it's not retaining any oil or fluid or anything like that it's just a cover for the belt so it's just to keep dirt and crap out of there all right now so at this point to get the lower cover off we're gonna have to take that crank pulley off right there so you gotta come around here take your wheel off so with the wheel off now to get to your crank pulley you're gonna have to get this plastic cover out of the way uh, depending on the vehicle it'll be slightly different but for me it's one piece all right so I got this wheel well cover pulled back enough where I can get to this. So there's your crank pulley. But a lot of them are this 19 millimeter, if not all of them. Uh, so this can be a real pain to get off. Um, I'm gonna try this, see if it works. But a lot of times, even with the impact, uh, it won't come out and you need to buy a weighted and there's another term for it as well, but it'll be a lot bigger and thicker and a lot heavier. Socket that uh, it multiplies your torque because it's a lot heavier. So as it bounces back and forth, it helps break that free. So, um, and if you don't have an impact, 
uh, then you're going to have to get a some sort of special uh, lock tool designed for these that allows you to lock this pulley so that you can break it free with a breaker bar. Alright, so this is a get in there. There we go. Thousand foot pound. Well, <laughs> alright, so. I'm going to keep trying here for a little bit, and if I can't get it out, I'm going to go out to get that weighted socket I mentioned. All right. I could not find that socket I needed uh, without ordering it and having to wait several days. I'm trying to get this card done uh, by tomorrow. So um, what I was able to find was this lock tool that I was discussing earlier. So the way this works, it hooks in there, and then right there you got a half-inch drive, and you just lock another... Uh, breaker bar or big ratchet and you can just put it on this uh, axle here and so it'll start to turn and then you'll hit here and it'll stop that way you can break that free at least that's the idea the other advantage of that lock tool there is when you go to reinstall it you can also utilize it uh, to hold it still to get your final torque value on that bolt when you reinstall it so you have it set up kind of like that I'm noticing that this lock tool is wanting to tip down so you might have to have like somebody press it in, you know, so it doesn't slip, hold it in place for you. Uh, but you'll set it up like that so it'll catch on the axle. Um, then take your breaker bar and try to break it free. Oh, all right, so I finally got it out, okay? That breaker bar, not long enough to give me enough leverage on it. And put this piece of exhaust pipe on the end about right there to make it a little longer and, and that's about as long as I could get it with the vehicle as high as it is so if you can get it higher you can put a longer extension on it and make it even easier um, I didn't even have the arm strength I had to push with I had to crawl under there and I pushed with both my legs literally just about as hard as I freaking could so I finally got it off of there you're gonna need as long a breaker bar as possible have to add something to it potentially if you don't have a super long one and you got to get the vehicle up high enough so you can get something that long on it to get the leverage to crank it off with the lock tool or you need that weighted socket and a, a pretty strong impact as well at least a thousand foot pounds if not more all right so with that finally out of there you can take this pulley off Yep, mine feels pretty loose. Uh, so you should be able to wiggle this off with your hand. Just kind of grab it, wiggle it back and forth. If not, you might have to use a pulley puller. You don't need to mark it because you can see that key right there, that little notch pin. Uh, so it'll go back on in the exact same orientation. Just make sure you do not lose that pin. All right, so with that pulley off, uh, we should be able to get this lower cover off now. I don't believe the motor mount holds it back. Uh, but it's coming off either way because this motor mounts in the way of the water pump coming off. Uh, but I'm going to get these bolts out of here, pop this cover off, and then uh, advance from there. So there's your lower cover. Don't forget to retain that gasket unless you're replacing it. Before I get to the motor mount, I wanted to mention this little disc here. Okay. Pay attention to which way that goes. Because it's lipped on once. It's, it's, they may look slightly different depending on what vehicle you're doing. Uh, but each side is slightly different it Absolutely has to go back on the same way it came off So make sure you pay attention to which way it goes on So now I got to remove the motor mount to get to the water pump that's behind it you See there's a bolt here. There's some bolts up top Looks like some bracketry you do have a ground wire attached right there And it looks like whatever this is needs to come off as well. This is slightly different than some of the other vehicles um, some of the other ones are more simplified where it's just a few bolts in the ground wire and that's it uh, but this one looks like on this Odyssey here there's a, a few extra little things I gotta move and take off uh, but make sure you support the engine uh, via the oil pan there and a similar method to this don't use too big a block and crush your exhaust system 
All right, so you take the long bolt out of there, take those top two bolts, and then I might need two hands, but all right. So on this Odyssey, there's a there's three bolts holding this, the rest of that motor mount on there, and there's one that's recessed in the middle, and that's all the space you got. <laughs> So, I can't get a ratchet on it. You cannot get a regular box and wrench on it because it's recessed in the mount. Uh, so, I have to take the other piece of this mount right here, this black piece where that long bolt came out. I got to un unbolt that from the frame right there. Uh, pull that out so that I have clearance. Then we're done for the day. I'm going to have to come back and hit this again tomorrow to get it finished up. All right. Ready to get back to work. So... If you can't tell, I was having fun here. In order to get to that bolt, because uh, there's one on each side here, and then there's one hidden here in the back. The only way to get to this is to remove the ECU. And that's no easy task. You have to remove all the mounting bolts, pop off the cover, and then unplug it down here, these three. And then also got to get this off. And uh, by the way, since you're unplugging the ECU, you definitely want to disconnect your battery first. Also, also, I popped out the hood prop to give myself more room to get this out. So I just got it propped up with a big board right now. All right, so there's that thing. This was the recess I was talking about. That's why we had to move all that crap just to get that one bolt out. Uh, but then it turns out there's a little bolt here attached to a bracket that holds it in place After you get all these out, so then you gotta take that out too. Yeah, uh, but now finally with that out of the way Now we're ready to take the water pump and belt and all the other things off that we're replacing down there So let's get to it So before you start taking everything off you got to um, temporarily reinstall that crank pulley bolt uh, because you have to get the number one piston the top dead center to keep everything in time the way you do that is lining up these timing marks which i've already done now so you got to be careful to line up the the right marks it's not these marks it's not the mark in between the tooth but the one that literally goes straight up the middle of a tooth and honda marked this one from the factory um, some of them are going to be marked, some might not be, but don't get the marks confused, it's, it's not any of these, it's not the ones that go between the teeth. You'll have one mark that runs right up the middle of a tooth like that, and that's what you got to line up with this mark right here. Now you got to be careful, because depending on where you're standing at when you look at it, it might look like it's not lined up. Like right there, it looks like it needs to go further, and this might be a little difficult to show on camera. Right there, it still looks like it needs to go a little bit further, but that's because I'm not quite lined up. This pipe's kind of in the way here. But if you stand in the... You're going to have to find the right spot to where you're dead straight on with it. Get it lined up. The rear, you got to make sure... This is also another way to confirm. There's your mark right there. You see, you can't see any teeth from the side on this one. But the mark that's clear out on the outer uh, rim of that pulley there. And again, this one's marked with black marker from the factory, but there's no guarantee that yours will be marked. Now you see, it looks like that one's not quite lined up, like it still needs to go farther forward. But that's because I can't get any farther back and see it. I need to be standing about here to view it straight on, but I can't because this is in the way here. So it is normal for that to look like it's a little bit off, but that's in reality because you can't actually stand where you need to to see if it's straight lined up like you can on the front one here so just make sure you get this front one lined up perfect and um, make sure that your rear marks there too and it's gonna look like it's a little off but it's just an optical illusion because you can't stand where you need to to view it correctly so now I'm gonna mark this I'm gonna draw a line very carefully um, to line it up there do the same on the back one and I'm gonna do similar down here I'll show all this in a second um, that's going to help you get the new belt lined up perfect to make sure you don't have it a tooth off I'll explain that more here in a second when we get to that Okay, like that 
The back one's a little harder to do because you can't really get back there and get straight with it, but that's about all I could manage there. And then on the bottom as well, I just tried to mark it on that tooth there, on the tooth on the belt, uh, where it was pointing, to the best of my knowledge, absolute most straight down without being left or right. Make sure the mark transfers onto that gear there. Then remove this hydraulic tensioner here. Um, if you take the bottom bolt out first, then it'll pivot on the top one. Now with the tensioner out of there, you can potentially uh, go ahead and remove the belt, uh, but it's still tight in some places. So I'm thinking it would be better to remove this idler pulley and the tensioner pulley first. Um, let me show you why. As I was trying to remove the belt, um, my cams shifted a little bit because of pulling on the belt trying to get it free. If this thing would focus, you see that one moved a lot. So that's the point of those marks. So that's not a big deal. We can just uh, turn the cams and get them lined back up before we install the new belt. You also want to make sure that this didn't move at all as well. Um, so it's actually probably a good idea to go ahead and transfer that mark not only from here but down on this plate as well so you can monitor whether it's shifted or not. So I got this front one lined back up um, but uh, honestly since I'm replacing these cam gear seals uh, this is gonna happen to me anyway so uh, because with having to take this off I'm gonna have to it's likely gonna move on me and I got this rear one back where it was too, but like I said, it's probably going to move on me anyways when I'm taking these cam gears off. Alright, so there's your idler. It's just hold on by that bolt, and then here's your tensioner pulley. It's held on by this bolt, but there's this sleeve in here that I believe you have to transfer to the new one, so don't lose that. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the belt off now. Alright, so there's the belt out. So I would recommend labeling this and keeping track of it as you pull it out so you know which mark came from where. Uh, so I went ahead and marked it top front, top rear, and then because of those two being marked, I know that that's the bottom one. Uh, because, as I said, you want to line this up with the new belt, which I'll grab and explain now. Alright, so there's the new belt, and what you're going to want to do is transfer these marks from the old one to the new one, so you'll match it up. And the way you'll do that is by counting the spaces. Now, obviously, these top ones are marked in between teeth. See there, they're both in between teeth. So you count the spaces, make sure you get it exact, double count, triple count, whatever, make sure you don't mess up. And then you put the marks on the exact same, the exact same distance, not a measured distance with a tape measure or anything like that because the old one might be stretched. That's why you count out the spaces. So you put it the exact amount of teeth or in between teeth as it is on the old one and then you have to do the same for down here at this point you're counting teeth so count from this one or that one it doesn't really matter how many teeth until your mark is there and then also transfer that to the new one uh, so you do this to ensure that you get the new one installed correctly and that it's the same amount of teeth between each pulley and cam gear and all that that way you're not skipping teeth uh, if you go and put it on there you might put it one tooth off on accident and then you're a tooth off and it's not going to run run quite right because your your timing's off so that's the purpose of doing this now we're replacing the water pump too as you should um so i'm going to go ahead and unbolt that now and you will have about a half to three quarters of a gallon of coolant pour out from under that water pump when you remove it that's nice all over my jack and jack stand i tried to catch it but most of it missed there's a little piece right there with a, a hole in it. You stick a screwdriver up in there and you just pry it back on it to break the seal. All right, so there's with everything out. Um, if this has ever been done before, then somebody may have put RTV sealant around the water pump and you want to make sure you get all that scraped off. Uh, but it's not necessary because the water pump has its own gasket. But sometimes people do it anyways. Um, but uh, so... Since I'm doing this crank seal, I gotta get this gear off of here, which means I gotta get uh, my crank pulley bolt back out. So I'm gonna blast that with the impact real quick, get it out, and get this gear off of here and that bracket so I can get to the seal itself. A lot of that coolant falls down in this lip here, so I'd recommend taking that bracket off to wipe all that coolant up, anyways, whether you're doing the seal or not. 
so you don't want that crank to turn on you so that's why you use an impact uh, but if for some reason you don't have an impact and you just use regular breaker bars and ratchets you probably put a, a box wrench on that or a socket and a ratchet and just hit it real quick that way it'll break it free without moving otherwise you're gonna have to find a way to hold this thing still like jamming a flathead screwdriver in there or something so you can break that bolt free because even if you're not doing the crank seal you're still gonna have to take this back out after lining up your timing marks to get your pulley back on uh, for reinstall if at any point during this removal and installation this pin comes out or you remove it intentionally like i am because i'm taking this gear off keep note of which way it goes mine has a little tapered bottom in there so remember the taper goes on the bottom for me so i don't think a traditional seal puller is really going to work here uh, because you got that crankshaft in the way so you can't get it popped in there um, so i'm probably going to have to do the traditional pick and screwdriver method to get it out kind of like that where you just kind of shove it in a little bit and start prying it out until the metal frame of it starts bending and then you can get it popped out so there she goes i just had to pry around work my way around and then it eventually pops out uh honestly it only took me about 30 seconds but i've done a lot of these so you might be at it a few minutes if you've never done one before so make sure you put it in the right way uh, i will go like that this part goes on the engine side and this part faces out now there's this little lip in here that's tapered inward that slides over the end of the crankshaft uh, but the crankshaft there is slightly bigger around than that lip. So you're going to have to kind of shove it on there. You want to get some clean oil, motor oil on your finger and kind of rub all the way around that edge and on this to help it pop over that. So it seems like this 36 would work for me, 36 millimeter. Maybe a 37, 38 would probably be better, um, but it's too short. I can't touch the seal here I'm hitting there so you're gonna need a deep one uh, this is the best method to do it to drive it in nice and straight and even and uh, not tear up the rubber but because I don't have one that's deep enough to not hit this I'm gonna have to use a different method so what I'm gonna do instead use something as wide as possible definitely not like a little screwdriver or nothing that'll stab it I'm gonna use the edge of this against it tap it lightly with the hammer and go all the way around the bunch until it's completely flush all right so i got the crank seal fully installed i had to use an extension to get it out here far enough to get the hammer on it uh, so now we got to go up and do those crank seals remember these uh cam and crank seals are optional a lot of people don't do them um but it's a good idea while you have everything off and you're in there especially if you're paying the shop eleven hundred dollars to do this to go ahead and have those seals replaced while you're at it too. That way you never have to worry about them. So here's the cam gear tool I'm gonna have to use. There's your information on it. That's the part number, I guess. That's what it looks like, universal. So you got all kinds of different pieces to fit different cams. All right, so this is the orientation I'm using here. You can screw these in from either side and you can see that silver thing there is a spacer I had to use to get the length equal. Uh, so that's the contraption I came up with to hook it into here. So the little end's going to go in one of those little notches there and the big one in one of the big ones. So I got to hook it in there like that, hold back on it while I go forward with another uh, ratchet and socket on that bolt down there to break that bolt loose. All right, so there's the front one off. There's your bolt. You can see our timing mark there. So it's keyed but this is a built-in key at least on this one it is so you don't got to worry about dropping it or losing it and then of course there's a notch on the end of the camshaft there for that key to fit so you get it lined back up properly uh that was really really tight i had to use this which is pretty long half inch drive plus that pushing forward on one pulling back on the other simultaneously really freaking hard and then it finally broke loose uh, so this back one's going to be real fun because there's not that much room to get stuff back in there so the back one's going to be more difficult but it's going to be the same process just harder because there's not as much room back there so there appears to be this metal cover here right here it looks like i gotta take these two bolts out to pop that off to get to that seal back in there 
All right, so there's with the cover out of the way, it'll just hang by that cam sensor wire there, and there's the seal. So I'm gonna pluck it out the same way I did with the uh, crankshaft seal. I got that one out. Uh, it was a pain in the butt, way harder than the crank seal, partly because it's smaller, partly because you got less room in here. So I had to use a different combination of little screwdrivers. This one helped a lot. Uh, I was prying from both sides. I w and once I got a little bit of a lip out, I was hammering down with the other one to bend it so that I could try to pry it and pop it out then, which finally worked. But so this rear one is really going to suck. The install was surprisingly much easier. Um, I put oil on the inside as I did on the crank, as I showed. But I also put some oil on the outside of it. And I was able to just to push this thing in with my fingers, which is good because... I don't know how you would get something down in here with a hammer to whack it in there. So maybe that's by design. I'm not sure. Maybe it's because I put oil around the outside also so that it was just able to slip in. So I'm going to do the same on the rear and hopefully it goes just as well because there's no way I can get a hammer back in there. So I'm putting it back on here and I'm getting ready to tighten it up. And I just noticed <laughs> that that's bent. So I don't know that I would recommend this tool, honestly. I mean, it gets the job done. I think what I'm going to do instead to avoid that, if it'll work and give me room to get a socket on there, just use two of the big ones instead and hook it in those big holes, which, you know, maybe it's not the tool's fault. Maybe that's what I should have done in the first place, but we'll find out. Yeah, that actually gives me more room for my socket, so... That's what I should have just done in the first place. All right, got her all reinstalled. Your two bo little bolts for the plate that's under it is 16 foot pounds. And your main bolt here for the cam gear itself is 67 foot pounds. And make sure you get your timing mark lined back up. And of course, we're gonna double check all this before we reinstall the belt. So the rear is the same process. It's just gonna be more difficult because there's less room back there. So I'm gonna get that done and then we'll come back and. This freaking ladybug will quit landing on me. Uh, get back to the water pump and the belt and all that stuff down under. So I broke it free. The only problem is it's wanting to spring forward on me. So it's in the process of trying to depress a valve or something. So it's under spring tension and wanting to rock forward. Um, I push it back, try to get it back to where it was. And it's still under that spring pressure. And this is in the way here, um, so I can't quite get it back. And I can't get my tool out because it's under tension. Uh, I need it to get back to where it was, not on tension, to get that bolt out and all that. Uh, so I'm going to try, it. depending on how you orient that, uh, maybe having it all the way backwards when you break it free. I might try to spring backwards on you, but that's probably better because then you can just pull it forward. Uh, but right now I'm screwed, so I'm gonna take this pulley off of the uh, power steering pump, try not to have to remove the entire pump and see if that'll let that come forward till it rests at a natural position where it's not wanting to spring forward or back and then I can finish up. So to take this off, I'm just gonna uh, wedge a screwdriver or something through there and break that nut free. I lied. I just used my impact. Luckily it fit. I gave it a few braps and it took the uh, nut off even though it was spinning. <laughs> but if it didn't I just you know wedge a screwdriver through to hold it still. So yeah now we're in a neutral position. There's no uh, uh, spring pressure against it. So now I can uh, take it off, get the seal replaced and then uh, get it back on there. I'm gonna have to I don't know figure out how to align it for tightening it back up so that this thing's not on a on a bind like that all right everything's back in order i got this rear one done but this thing uh i don't know if i can see here this thing if you just barely go a millimeter past it either way the whole thing springs forward or back on you so you gotta yeah you gotta be really careful because i got so I had to tear my finger off. So you got to get it on that mark and then make very slight adjustments to get it lined up, which you can tell once the belt's off of it. 
you can see that tooth line up with that mark so you no longer have to deal with the optical illusion thing with the mark on the belt um, but yeah if you barely go forward a millimeter or two it'll spring on you several inches so you got to be careful with that and it sucks trying to line it up because of that 47 foot pounds on that if you had to take it off like I did just jam a, a ratchet or something in there something like that so that you can hold the pulley still and get your torque as I said your new water pump should come with a new gasket so I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed there's a new water pump installed your torque spec on those bolts is 8.7 foot pounds on this idler pulley it's 33 foot pounds the tensioner pulley is 19 foot pounds and don't forget that little tube I showed in the beginning. You gotta pull it out of the old one and reinstall it in this one. Now I gotta put this little drive gear back on because I had it off to do my crank seal. Uh, put my pin back in. Remembering the orientation that it went, I gotta line it up. And then the bracket goes on last uh, because it keeps that from coming off of there. So you can't put the bracket on first. 8.7. Uh, foot pounds on those bracket bolts there and now I'm ready to get the new belt put in all right so there's the new belt started I've already transferred the marks in correlation from the marks we put on the old belt to the to the new one as I discussed earlier in the video to make sure we get the hit everything correct um, so if you mess with this at all or well just period you should double check make sure this is in the same orientation as it was as I said earlier as well, you should carry this mark all the way down on this bracket so you know that this hasn't moved one way or the other, but I'm confident it's in the right place because it's pointing straight down just like I had it. So start your belt like that. All right, so trying to come from the bottom and wrap around this way wasn't working for me. Uh, so I went around the back side, which did work. And be careful pulling on the belt on that pulley because remember, or the cam gear there, because remember that's the one that likes to snap back and forth. Um, so I came up from the bottom got around that got around the water pump got it lined up there I just can't quite get it over this idler so I'm gonna have to move the crank literally just one millimeter I'm almost there I, I gotta turn it just a, like literally a millimeter so I can slip that over without tearing this the bottom of this belt and then I'll just put it back even though it, it doesn't really matter um, as you can see I got play here so I just need to turn it a little bit to bring that play down to give me it right here so I can slip it over that idler now the only way I'm gonna be able to do that is with my impact here because it'll get that bolt tight enough without moving this thing the wrong way uh, so that I can then put a socket on it and go the opposite direction so I can push that belt up ever so slightly uh, if you don't have an impact you're not going to be able to do this, so you better hope you can get your slid over then. Again, another reason to take that mark all the way down on that bracket, because I might have had that move just a millimeter that way and not known it, which is why I had to move it a millimeter back to get it up over there. So, after double checking that all our marks are still lined up, which they are, now we need to put the hydraulic tensioner uh, in here to get tension on this belt. And then we'll turn it over a few times make sure everything is good before we put the rest of it back together. Now some of the kits come with the new hydraulic tensioner, some do not. Highly recommend getting a kit with it because these are really expensive, especially if you get the Azen, which is what you want to go with so you don't have to worry about it failing a year or two later. Uh, these are over $100 uh, by themselves. So anyways, if you get a new one, it'll have this. It's already holding the pin in. So you can go ahead and bolt it up. And then once it's bolted up, you'll pull the pin out. This will shoot out and push against the tensioner pulley. If you reuse your old one, which I really recommend you don't, then you'll have to compress this with a C-clamp to push that in. And then find some sort of metal pin to stick through the holes to hold that back so that you can install it. Alright, once you have both those bolts torqued down to 8.7 foot-pounds, then you can pull this pin out. It'll shoot out and it'll put tension on your belt Ooh, how tight is that damn <laughs> I, might have to, I might have to use pliers on that I don't know why but mine was super stuck I couldn't get it out with my fingers I, I didn't even have enough grip with needle nose pliers I had to use these things squeeze as hard as I could and pull back really hard to finally get it out They're usually not that hard
All right, so apparently it takes six, I think, six complete revolutions of the timing belt before the lines will all align back up, which I was going to check, um, but I didn't realize it took six entire revolutions, with which with a ratchet is a hell of an arm workout, and that's the only option I have here because an impact gun won't turn it for you. You need something else that's not an impact to keep turning it for you and I don't have anything like that so I have to do it with a ratchet I'm two revolutions in and that's what I got uh, this is the bottom mark that's supposed to line up and so that's normal it takes uh, six revolutions I think it was so yeah six entire revolutions they should line back up um, but I knew everything was lined up when I put it on there I've got two complete revolutions in without hearing any funny noises without it uh you know s s catching up on me or anything like that without the belt slipping so should be good to go so now i gotta blast this back out so i can get this little thing back on here uh put the lower cover back on then my pulley and then get the bolt back in and torqued now i matched this new one up with the old one and it looked to be the exact length as in the old one didn't stretch any However, it is tighter, so maybe that old uh, hydraulic tensioner wasn't putting as much pressure on the uh, tensioner pulley as, as the new one is. So this part of the motor mount actually has to go on first before this lower cover because this loops over like that. All right, well, it's getting dark out again. It's December right now, so I don't have that many daylight hours each day. Anyways, I got the mount back in. Uh, first, as I said, 33 foot-pounds of torque on those three bolts. I got my lower cover installed. 8.7 foot-pounds of torque on those bolts. And it'll be the same for the upper covers as well. Now I need to get my crankshaft fully back on here. So, once again, I got that lock tool in there to hold the crank pulley still. Uh, so you torque this you can either torque this down to 47 foot pounds and then turn it an additional 60 degrees or about 180 foot pounds all right well, i got it torqued down so i'm gonna go in for the night and then we'll come out tomorrow and get it wrapped up all right new day let's get this thing finished up so we took care of all the major details down there um all I got left is we got to put these covers back on the front and back. Got to get the serpentine belt back on. Got to get the ECU plugged back in, bolted back down. Um, my hood prop that I popped off, I got to pop it back in. Anything else I may have moved or whatever. After all this is plugged back in, and plug or not plug, but reattach the battery. I got to get the rest of this motor mount back in here and tightened up. Uh, get my wheel well back up in there and put the wheel back on and we should be ready to go All right torque specs for the motor mount uh, Remember I said 33 foot-pounds to the piece that goes to the block These are also 33 foot-pounds and then these mounting bolts in the one that goes through and don't forget your little piece that attaches there are 40 foot-pounds And don't forget your bracket there if you took it off like I did for more room also whatever ground wire and bracket you had to take off of yours for whatever model and year you had. I got both my front and rear cam gear covers back on, upper timing covered, whatever you want to call it. Again, those are 8.7 foot pounds. Got the ECU back in, plugged in, all the bolts and everything tightened down, cover back on, cover back on the fuse box. My arm's going to be in the way here, but uh, good time to check. We just reinstalled the serpentine belt tensioner, 33 foot pounds on this bolt, 16 on that. But it's a good time to check these pulleys. Probably can't see that because of glare, but I'm spinning it up there. It spins freely, no noises. Check your alternator, same thing. Make sure the bearings aren't making any noises. AC compressor. Hopefully you can hear that. That one's making some noise. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Same thing with the power steering pump. This one has a little resistance to it, which is normal. So with that, I'll go ahead and get the serpentine belt on here, the new one, after I get that hood prop pop back in there. 
All right, serpentine belt is back on. The easiest way I found, at least on this one, because the location of all the pulleys was the exact same way I took it off. Pop that off of here, put it back on here. Um, but it was much easier for me to go underneath, turn that uh, tensioner pulley all the way back, and have somebody up here to pop it on for me. All right, so I topped off the radiator, and I actually ended up having to put an entire gallon in it, and then uh, or can't remember if it was partial or not but it was real close to a full gallon before it finally poured out uh, try to pour it in slow that way you don't get uh, air bubbles in it and get if you get air in the system then you could overheat uh, so pour it slowly we didn't lose a whole lot so i don't think that's going to be an issue but we're still going to be careful on the first drive double check so this is topped off i added a little to this i'm gonna start the car let it uh, get the full operating temperature uh, leave the cap off of both and so if there's any bubbles they might work their, their way out whatnot all right fired right up should be able to hear it running super smooth uh, actually when i received this uh, to do work on it it was making a light tapping sound and i do not hear that now so i don't know if that's just a coincidence or if maybe that was that old hydraulic tensioner slapping around a little bit in there now well, there you go so we, you can see that uh level went down a little bit right top that off and just monitor it to uh see if it keeps going down see if i need to add any more and let those air bubbles come out all right well i wish i had recorded it but i just came in here and gave it a little bit of gas like this I was doing it again, but I don't think you'll pick it up on camera. You can hear like bubbles going through the coolant system. It's like bloop, 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 bloop. So I'm going to do that a couple times to help uh, get the coolant going through and uh, get the air out. Um, I'm going to have to do it when it's at full op temp too. Because that's when that thermostat's going to open and then start allowing a complete flow of the coolant system. All right, well, we were doing some revs there, and again, I missed it on camera. Um, I started out at 2,000 first, like I showed you guys, but when I brought it up to 3,000, sitting there holding at 3,000 RPM, and the van's warmed up, by the way. Uh, we was getting bubbles coming out, so it was spilling some cooling out, and then we'd stop uh, 20, 30 seconds later, bring it up to 3,000 RPM again. After a few seconds, it would start bubbling out some more. But that time, as you can see, it's moving, at 3,000 RPM, but no more bubbles are coming out, so it should be good. Uh, looks like my level in this is still okay, but I'm gonna top the radiator off and get this to max full, which is all the way down there, and uh, go take it for a good test drive. Make sure I don't have over any overheating problems or anything like that. I'm gonna start out not going too far away at first in case we do have air in the system and it wants to get warm on me. Uh, if I'm fine after that, then I'll go take it for a nice long drive while still monitoring the temperature to make sure that we don't have any uh, heat problems. Because if you still have air in the system, uh, you can get an air pocket trapped in there. And you could, it could cause it to overheat because of that. So that's why we're doing this, basically burping the system, get all the air out. There wasn't a whole lot in there because we only lost about a gallon. So it's not that bad. Um, also parked on a slight incline where the front is up. Um, if you can get the front up, the higher the better because it'll help that air come out. If you're on flat ground, uh, then you might have to do this a little bit longer than what I had to do. Well, I just topped off the radiator. Now a few bubbles are deciding to come out again. So we're going to sit here and let all these bubbles come out before I put the cap back on and go take her for a drive. I might give it a few more revs to see if I can get a few more out, but I'm going to let it sit here at idle and do what it's doing first.
So she's doing just fine. I don't have any more of that blooping, gurgling sound going through the coolant system. I'm gonna keep driving around for a little while, make sure our temps don't rise or anything, but that's it. Uh, we should be good to go now. Appreciate you watching. If this video helped you out, make sure you leave a like and uh, catch you guys on the next one.